media viewer, thank you for being part of this program of 40 Days of Prayer. Today on day 21st or 21 of the series, I want to invite you to one more time feel at the feet of Jesus. We are on the series of Christ and his righteousness. And, and yesterday we were able to go through how God, you know, himself is holy, he dwells in the holiness, and so we receive uh, righteousness once we step into his environment, when we step into his presence. And today we are advancing in that series of, of, of uh, righteousness of Christ, of Christ and his righteousness. And we will be looking at the science of all sciences. <coughs> the science of all sciences, of course, this is a discussion on uh, salvation. And we'll be guided by the text of Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. But before we read the text and say a few things, let's seek the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you so much for this precious moment when you share the scriptures before we take time to pray. We want to invite your presence, Lord, to speak to us and guide our thoughts, guide our hearts to appreciate, understand, acknowledge, and sign your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The science of all sciences. I know many of us today, we are educated. Um... We've been to school, we have studied science, and uh, there are those who have especially pursued that path of sciences, and they have got into depth of study of various aspects of sciences. Uh, and, and they know quite a lot about you know, science and a number of aspects of sciences. But, but I'm here uh, this moment um, in this uh, season of 40 Days of Prayer to speak about a different science, and of course, this is science of all sciences, the science of salvation. Now, uh, Colossians chapter uh, 1 and verse number 19, the word of God says, For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. I'll read one more time. Colossians chapter 1, verse 19 through 20. For it, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell, and having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. What is Paul saying here? You see, Paul who is here discussing the person of Christ. You see, Christ, he's a human being, but also Christ is divine. Christ is God. He was in the beginning with God. And he was God. He is God. He becomes human through incarnation. The plan of redemption makes him become a human being to incarnate that he may come to be born like we are to live and experience our tribulations that then he may become our high priest who is acquainted with our infirmities, that we is able to sympathize with our situation, that what Paul would, uh, you know, put is very clear in uh, the text of Hebrews. But now, here in Colossians, Paul discusses the theme of the doctrine of the person of Christ and speaking to the church at Colossae and telling them that the one that you saw, the one that you have heard, the one that you interacted with, like John would say, the one that we, our hands have handled, have touched, this one, was not just the son of Mary and Joseph. This one is not just the son of man, but this one is God per se, God per excellence. And he says, it is pleased to God, the Father, that in him, who? Christ, in the person of human being, in him, in him should all fullness dwell. Of fullness. Of God, you see, of course, you know, Paul at this time, 
is appreciating in his mind the situation that was taking place there or happened at that time when there were, you know, uh, Gnostics who were teaching heresies and preaching Christ who was just uh, a human being and just appear in the modes of God and so he is not God and all that kind of a thing. But, and so Paul is arguing and saying, no, the one we saw, the, the one our hands handled, that one that we perceived but we saw also, the same is actually the fullness of God. In him is fullness of God. And in verse number 20 it says, And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by his cross rather, by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, Christ came because we had parted way with God. He came to reconcile us. Christ came because there was a conflict between us and God. And Christ came to reconcile us together with God. And so for him to reconcile us, he had to become like one of us. So he incarnated. He was, he was subordinated that he may become lesser than God to assume the human body that he may be the savior of humanity. Now, when we have interacted with Christ as a human being, then we tend to think he's just a mere being, he's just a mere human being, but then we appreciate that Paul is you know, taking us from the level of mere understanding of Jesus, the son of Mary, and Joseph, the man who walked through the dead parts of Palestine, to the one who came from heaven, the one who was before the world came to be, the one who in the beginning was the word in the scripture. This one is the fullness of God. You see, all things have been made through him, and there's nothing that has been made that was made without him. And so we are looking at the depth of the science of salvation. How one who is God then can incarnate and become a human being. One who is eternal, existing without a beginning or an end, then could becomes, becomes, reduces and empties himself of all that that made him God and then be born as a human being and actually lower than all other human beings. And how that kind of a death and of, of course ultimate death on the cross becomes the means and the perfect means of salvation. Who can understand this? What science is this that we are redeemed through the death of one who lived before eternity and who is ever living that he would be born and become a savior of humanity. This is the science of all sciences. And those people who understand, you know, I think that's why, as what Paul says, it's actually to those who are perishing, this is foolishness. But to us who are being redeemed, it is the power of salvation. And it says, he was, I mean, God was pleased to make him the fullness of godliness. Now, let me read a text from my favorite author again, and you'll be appreciating. I, I don't shy from quoting from this author, Ellen G. White, a very powerful uh, author. Uh, the book now is Education and page number 126. Uh, just listen to this uh, quote. The science of redemption is the science of all sciences. The science that is the study of the angels and of all the intelligences of the unfallen worlds. That is the science of salvation. The science that engages the intentions of our Lord and Savior. It engages the intentions. What made Christ live? The glories of heaven. What made Christ live that which made him God and become a human being? You know, Paul put it and says, he counted nothing to be equal with God that he may come and redeem us. This is a deep science. It says, the science that engages the intentions of our Lord and Savior, the science that enters into the purposes and broadened in the mind of the infinite. Kept in silence through times eternal. It goes on to say, the sign that, that will be the study of God's redeemed throughout endless ages, that this science of redemption, the purpose, the reason, the intention, the intent of the soul of God and Christ for him to come to be born and to become a, a redeemer of humanity, this 
is the science that will occupy our time eternally when we finally be found us, find ourselves in heaven. It says, the science that will be the study of God's redeemed through endless ages. This is the highest study in which it is possible for man to engage as no other study can. It will quicken the mind and uplift the soul. In the time I immense myself the subject of redemption and look at the plan of God of redemption and, and what it took God is grace and ma massive love and the sacrifice of Christ condensing and, and becoming like a human being and, and, and coming to dwell with us and finally being rejected by his very own and enduring the pain of the cross just for you and for me did it's an endless study of how we are being redeemed this moment, as you seek the Lord in prayer this morning, I want to invite you one more time to think about him who died for you. To think about this desire, to know exactly what it looks like. You see, the plan of redemption which was, was agreed and everything was put in place even way before the foundations of the world. In fact, Christ, you know, John would say in the book of Revelation, he is the lamb of God that was slain before the foundations of the world. That Christ accepted to die even before we were created. What a marvelous God we have. What a marvelous grace we have. I mean, if we lose heaven, it's not because God did not provide for us. It's because we intentionally resisted his pleadings. This morning or this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, I want to invite you to have a deep desire to get into the study of salvation, to learn of God, to learn of Christ. And that's why Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who though he was equal with God, he counted that nothing, but he emptied himself, that he may come and redeem you and redeem me. Did you want to take this in vain? Do you want to take this lightly, even when there's such a sacrifice just for you? Won't you receive this salvation? Won't you accept this salvation? Won't you freely come, because freely it has been given? Won't you come and trust him to guide you and to equip you, to prepare you, to preserve you, and to usher you into his kingdom? This is my desire. And I pray that it may be your desire. I invite you as you join me in prayer that today, we may pour our hearts to the Lord and immense ourselves the desire to study more of his salvation and be found in eternity that we continue learning the subject of redemption. Join the world church to pray for a deeper appreciation of the work of salvation which Jesus accomplished for you. Join the world church to pray for a clearer understanding of what truly happened on the cross. Pray for the multitudes who do not understand the wonderful truth of Christ, our righteousness, and the gospel of salvation that is all from him, not of our human works. Pray for your immediate and extended family. Pray for their salvation and for opportunities to share with them your faith, God's word, and the love of Christ. Pray for those who are struggling with addictions to find victory and pray for your seven names in your list. Pray for an opportunity to interact with them and invite them to church or your home or a meeting that we may continue studying together. This and many more that the Lord shall push you to pray for. Wherever you are, take time and commit yourself, commit to your home, commit to your family, commit to your church, commit to your friends to the Lord in prayer. Let's pray. Our gracious Father in heaven, this precious moment of prayer, we want to thank you because we know indeed it is blessed to be at your feet. We have discussed the theme of salvation, the science of all sciences, the wonder of it all, to know that you left the glories of heaven, the majesty of heaven, the magnificence of heaven, just to come and save me. Lord, I pray this morning, beginning with myself, Touch my heart in you, Lord. Renew my thoughts and my understanding for you, that I may never wander away from your way, O Lord, my Father. But you shall arrest me and imprison me in your righteousness. And I pray, Lord, that my viewer may have the same desire, that we may seek to know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you sent, 
that we may desire to know nothing but him and him crucified. The Lord, our walk with you will be a walk worthy the calling and we shall be preserved for eternity. Lord, I'm praying today a very special way that you may plant in the heart of my viewer a deep yearning for things of heaven, a deep yearning for things of God, a deep yearning for eternity, that we shall immense ourselves in the subject of redemption. We shall seek glory after glory to know you better, Lord, and to see you as you are, to see you on the cross as you agonize there, Lord, the pain that you bore because of our sin, that we may be called your children. This morning, Lord, this afternoon, this evening, wherever we, my viewers are, we may surrender to you. We may say, Lord, we can't wait any longer in sin. We are surrendering our sinful ways to you, our tendencies to you. We need you to redeem us. We surrender to you. The Lord, you shall receive us in glory and equip us and prepare us for the second coming. We pray for the world church, Lord. Everyone, every single event is wherever they are, Lord. We pray for them. For revival of true godliness in these evil days and end times, that this church will be a light and a salt to this world. But we also pray not only for the Adventists, but for your people across the world. All your people that you have redeemed, different churches, those who know you, those who don't know you, Lord, these are your children, these are your people. Reach out to them, use us. As who we have already known you, we have come to the light. Activate us, Lord, with your love that we may go out to share. We may go to tell them of your grace and of your love. And as you prepare us too, you may prepare them for eternity. In praying for the seven member list that you have, Lord, may you continue blessing these people and connecting us more intentionally and deeply with them that we may begin Bible studies that shall grow us spiritually. We pass and prepare us for the second coming. Peace and more, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, my dear viewer, for waiting upon this program every day. You've been a blessing to me. I know I'm also a blessing to you. Pray for me as I pray for you. Remember to subscribe to our channel so that you can continue receiving these messages every single day. But also remember to share with as many friends as you can. You never know who needs this message now. Just click that button and share with as many as you can. See you tomorrow. Lord be with you.